Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host Connie, and today we are finishing off Sympho Gear with episodes 11 through 13. So, you may be wondering why we're doing three episodes here when we've just been doing one episode and everything each time. Well, I've basically been requested to. <laughs> um, I was told that for this season, and apparently, I guess, every season, um, the final three episodes are a three-part finale. That it's just, I guess, uh, something that this series does each time. Um, which is fine. And that doesn't mean I have to react to them all together. But I was basically requested on the Discord to do so. Like, I was specifically, like, specifically went out of their way to say, like, oh, by the way, it, these three episodes are the finale altogether. You should probably get to them together and everything. It's like, fine, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm not opposed to doing all three at once. It's just, I wasn't initially planning on it. Um, I was initially planning on doing 11 on its own and then 12 and 13 together, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. Um, so yeah. We are finishing off Season 1 of Sympho here today. And, so, I, I don't, I haven't really, like, discussed this and talked about this in, I guess, in depth. And everything, but this is definitely one of those series that has surprised me. Because when I went into this, um, like before I had even seen episode one, I honestly did not expect to like this. I honestly went into this expecting that it was going to be just probably a kind of boring um music based anime that was going to be something like your lie in april that for me at least was just excessively boring like i could not get into that series at all and i tried i really did um or there's the there's another one uh what god what is it called he became euphonium uh, that one as well, it's just I couldn't get into it. And I, I was expecting this to be like one of those. Because again, I didn't have the context of the insanity of this series um, when I started. So that's what I was expecting. I was expecting for it to be kind of a boring, generic music series. Um, but I also did know what at least one of the characters who I now know as Hibiki looks like. Um, I, I, I had the image of her in her armor, so I knew what she had looked like at that time. And so I'm thinking like, okay, so there's probably a little action thrown in to try and make it a little more interesting, a little more unique. But I, I still didn't really expect to like it that much. Again, I expected that I was going to drop this, honestly. I, I expected that it was going to be kind of boring and generic and not really much of anything. I had heard the name of the series of, of Simpho Gear before, but I had never really, uh, I guess you could say I had never really paid attention to it. Um, and I've never heard anyone really go into it at all. Um, I've just heard people mention it by name very briefly, and that's it. So I don't, I, I didn't even know what people thought of it. Apparently, it's a very niche series. Like, it doesn't have, like, a massive audience, but the audience it has is very, very dedicated to it. And... It's not like this big mainstream series, per se. But it's known enough about that it's not completely um, out there either. So, 
yeah, it, it's a really interesting case for me. And when I watched the first episode, it's like, you know, it obviously surprised the hell out of me. Like, it was, a, it was very different than what I was expecting. And I was really, honestly, just completely blown away by how unexpected everything that went down in that episode was, pretty much. And then it just, it, it, honestly, it got better from there because it actually started developing everything. Um, we got more with our characters, more depth and, and all. And obviously it started bringing in a lot more with the trauma, which, as you guys know, I've been focusing a lot on the entire trauma baby thing with characters like Chris and Tsubasa, and even to a smaller degree, Hibiki. Um, and it's just like, I, I've connected with this series in a way, in an unexpected way, a completely unexpected way. And so it, it surprised me. And, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this would not be anywhere near like a top 10 list or even a top 20 list for me in terms of favorite anime of all time i'm just gonna tell you that right now i'm, I'm not gonna bullshit you or try i'm not gonna try to make it seem like i like this so much more than i do i very much do like this series but it's not it's not that good for me like it, it's just it's just not <laughs> There are so many other shows that I prefer. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't put this in even a top 20. Though it would probably be somewhere close after that. After number 20. Um, just based off of like the top of my head and everything. But yeah. It's like... Honestly, it's really good. But I just like a lot of other shows better. <laughs> and we're heading into the finale here. So let's actually talk a little bit about what happened last time. So Chris is starting to work with the others, though she's being completely soon to Ray about it. Um, though I'm sure that will change eventually, to be fair. I I'm sure she'll become less Sundere and more just, you know, actual teammate. Um, but she's got to work her way to that. And I, I think I said this before, but I really like that they're doing it that way. Because trauma doesn't just heal overnight, and it doesn't heal with, like, one victory. She's not going to be able to get over all of this that easily she she has insane trauma insane distrust of humanity it, it's like that's not just going to be fixed just because uh fine betrayed her or because hibiki and to a lesser degree subasa <laughs> are showing her friendship she's going to have to work towards this it's going to be something that she's going to have to continue to give a chance to it, it, again it's not just going to happen instantly it's not just gonna like be a snap and we're done kind of situation I, I i just really like that they took that approach in the series um but yeah so chris is working with them um to deal with the these flying uh noise that you know, spawn other noise. Again, as I said before, reminds me of the uh, the wyvern in Ruby Volume Three. Um. So yeah, they go and they work together and manage to succeed. And Chris's song there also showcases. Um, like how much she's growing and changing as a character 
shows that she wants this friendship that she wants to have this kind of thing in her life so we find out soon though that this was all a diversion because the school is being attacked while they're away they were lured away from the school and now the only defense is there was miku who was like agreeing to help protect things and you know bring the students and everyone to safety if needed but she's an ordinary person she can't do too much so now we need our heroes to somehow get there in time to stop whatever fine is planning so that leads us into our finale and yeah i assume this is going to be a major battle with fine i don't think she's going to be defeated though um because i i have a feeling that at least for now she's going to continue to be the main villain going into season two um that might change later on but for now i think she'll continue to be um she won't be part of the of the good guys anymore like that bridge is burned um we saw last time they had already found out about uh ryoko being a uh betrayer and everything so yeah that bridge is very much burned um but one other thing to add in um the ending the the outro theme is uh apparently sung by chris's va something i just never really put together um, but also, it, it focuses a lot on, like, Chris's, like, story and character and growth. Um, the first time I watched the ending theme, I don't think I knew Chris at that time. So it's like I didn't really have that point of reference. So, since this is the last reaction of the season, I am going to check out the ending theme one more time. Um... And I'll even check out the opening theme one more time, just to be fair on that regard. Um, just once, though. We'll check them out one more time and see if, just lyrically, just speaking lyrically, they give me any more of a look into things than I would have thought of before. Now, I know Chris is featured in the ending uh, visuals. Like, I, I've seen her featured in there. Because... Um, like just even just skipping through the ending just to check for things before like i've done it's like i've seen her like walking along and all so i'm just wondering exactly what the lyrics are going to be about um if it's if it adds anything new that like her song there in the last episode didn't um i don't know but like I said, we'll check it out one more time. So we'll check it out with episode 11, but then 12 and 13, we'll just skip through them again. Both the opening and the ending. So, all of that being said, um, right before we begin, that also means this series is going to be replaced. Um, I will mention in the afterthoughts what will take over this slot from Symphogear. Um, and all I'll say for now is that it will be another donation reward. So, yeah, we are, we are keeping a donation reward in this slot. Um, and I'll, I'll mention in the afterthoughts what that will end up being. So for now, let's just, uh, let's just get into it. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything for that point forward will, uh, everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episodes. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So, obviously, I knew that this finale was going to be big. Uh, I feel like that was pretty obvious that, um... It was going to be a big deal. That shit was really going to go down with Fina. Yeah, all of that was obvious. I did not know the scale that this was going to be, though. 
Because the scale of this finale, the scale of this battle against Fine was actually a lot more intense than I expected. It, it, like, again, with her goal of wanting to become equal to God because she has this parasocial love for him, um, but also the fact that she's trying to blow, she tried to blow up the moon in order to, uh, in order to try and bring people closer together under her rule. Um, it's like the fuck that, that wouldn't work by the way. Like she thinks that like, Oh, they would all flock to me because I have the relic. I'm the strong one. They would all serve me. And it's like, that would not happen. That's the humanity just would not do that. Humanity, there, there would be plenty of people who would say, fuck that, no, we're going to fight you. And, and humanity themselves wouldn't unite even in that. It's like, there, it would still be all over the place. It, it, it wouldn't work. It just wouldn't. That's not how humans are. She thinks she can bring you forth the world to unite by giving them a common enemy or whatnot or or a common goal or or something like that not really a common enemy because they'd be uniting with her under her so more of a common goal it's like it, it, again it wouldn't work that's not how humans work and i'm glad she died in the end because she needed to like having her survive would not have worked and honestly Hibiki was wrong to try and talk to her. I'm, I'm going to say that, and, and I know that might... Maybe it's controversial to the fandom. I don't know. Um, but Hibiki was wrong. Hibiki is very idealistic. She wants to be friends with everyone, and it's it worked with Tsubasa and Chris. But it's not going to work with an ancient evil priestess like her. She is way too far gone, and she proved that multiple times. And even after pulling the chunk of the moon down, like, Hibiki still, like, basically refused to kill her. She's like, let's just be friends instead. Uh, when your future self comes, give this message that we can unite by being friends and it's like shut the fuck up it's like hibiki i love you but no I, i'm sorry fine is evil she's not redeemable even that little thing at the end it's like she was just basically giving in like the little thing at the end where she uh kind of reverted into ryoko mode i guess you could call it and, and encouraged hibiki was basically her just giving in because she understood that Hibiki just wouldn't have like wouldn't have have any kind of response or a, 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 like taunting her or anything at that point wouldn't have done anything. I don't believe for a second there was any actual redemption there. Like I, I'm pretty much a hundred percent convinced of that. There was no redemption there. Nothing about Fine in the end there was like legitimate in in that regard she was still pure evil and needed to die and if fine does return in someone else at any point she'll again i presume have just the memories of the original priestess which is still a problem but i feel it's more it, or it, she'll be able to she'll be easier to handle than um, this Fine was because this Fine was also, you know, 12 years of all this research, 12 years of having like the relics and everything to, to figure out and make everything ready for her. If another Fine appears, it's going to be new. Though, to be fair, she could also hide her identity again, so they won't necessarily know if she appears right away. So there's that problem, too. Um, I don't know if we'll get another Fine in this series. Um, but we'll see. 
I was thinking she was gonna she was gonna somehow get away or something, and she was gonna be a major villain at least for one more season. But yeah, seeing as seeing as how it went throughout the uh, episodes and everything, it's like it's very clear she needed to die. Like there there was no getting around that. Again, Hibiki, I love the fact that she is so um, so empathetic and everything towards people that she is a good person. Her idealism is nice, but it's very naive, let's be honest. Hibiki in general is very naive, which we know. That's not new information. Um, and again, it can work on people like Chris and Tsubasa, but it's not going to work on someone like Fina. It's just, it's not. Like, you have to reach a point where your idealism just ends. And... and so I'm sorry, I, I still think she was in the wrong there. It's like how I think Aang was in the wrong with his decision at the end of Avatar The Last Airbender. I will stand by that. I, I, like, I, I stand firmly by that belief that Aang, Aang's decision to remain pacifist at the end of Avatar The Last Airbender was wrong and was actually immoral. Not to mention went against the very uh the very um what's the word the very role i guess of the avatar like went against what the avatar is all about but again that's that's not a conversation for today i've i've argued about that so much in the past i'm not going to get into that here <laughs> but it but it is very much it very much reminds me of that um the only difference here is that what needed to happen with Phoenix did still happen. Honestly, though, Hibiki should have finished her off before she pulled down the chunk of the moon, but still. Um, either way, she is dead. We can be happy about that. Um, the the fake-out deaths in this, though, in this finale, like... We get fake out deaths for each of uh, Subasa and Chris, and then they come back, and then we get fake out deaths with all three of them. <laughs> and it's like, okay, we get it. <laughs> it was so obvious, though. Like, it was super obvious, like, when uh, Subasa and Chris first died in this finale, that it's like, the, it was so obvious. Like, even if I didn't have the knowledge of multiple more seasons of this series, even if I, if I were watching this when it first happened, I would not have believed in the slightest that they were dead there it, it just it wouldn't have made sense it, it would it, it just it just wouldn't have worked honestly e even though it was like you know self-sacrifices and all it just it wouldn't have worked to have it happen in that way at that time now the sacrifice at the end if they hadn't revealed by the end of the episode that they were alive that one could it, when you were when this first came out, if you were watching at that point, that one could have surprised me. That one could have, uh, like, genuinely made me believe they were dead and that the next season would be different characters, like JoJo kind of thing, I guess. Um, but, again, the fact that there were, that there are so many seasons of this just made me, just, there, I didn't feel the stakes. Not that the stakes weren't there, it's just I didn't feel them because I, like, they're not going to kill off these characters. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. Uh, so... There was really no... Uh, nothing with that... Um, that I really believed. <laughs> so... But kind of, kind of my theories got proven right, and that was fun. Um... It, just not necessarily in the way I expected. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I, I like how the Tower of Babel story uh, and everything was brought into this. Um, and how that was used as... Uh, as Fine's origin and motivation, in a way. Um, and, and... Just taking it to, you know, the next extreme, basically. 
so so that was pretty interesting to me like ge genuinely interesting uh to see that play out here um and having the 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 elevator shaft end up being the the cannon was actually pretty pretty brilliant because I know I, I did notice I don't know if I ever said anything but I did notice like the very first time we see the elevator shaft which I believe is just episode one um maybe episode two but the very first time we see that elevator shaft like I noticed it it's like why does it look like that it looks it, like you look at it and it's like it's very weird looking like, it doesn't look like it'd be a normal elevator shaft, e even leading down into some kind of secret base. It, it looks very weird, very, like, unnatural, and, 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 and how do I put it? It looks like it's meant for something. I guess that's the best way to describe it. And finding out it is, it's like, I, I had no idea if that was actually going to be something, but I did notice that it looked fucking weird. <laughs> I, I was not expecting it to be this cannon. That one threw me off. But yeah, it's like, once it happened, it's like, oh yeah, okay, that makes, that kind of makes sense in a weird, twisted way. Um, yeah, and, and obviously Miku and the others helping Hibiki out of her ruts and everything. Is, I, I really like that because it, it's, it allows them to help in this fight and like have a legitimate important role without having the ability to use these relics and Sympho gears themselves. But it's, it still makes them important. It showcases that they're not useless. That they are just as important as Hibiki, Chris, and Subasa despite everything um and i was saying like early on in this finale that like chris's uh chris's story and character arc definitely feels more like a main character one than hibiki's but i i, I even mentioned like but we'll probably see hibiki use her superb song and every we'll probably see her, more with her and subasa after this and it's like and we did we got a big, we got some big stuff with Subasa, and then we got the big stuff with Hibiki. It's just we did one after the other, um, which is probably the best way to handle it, honestly. Um, but I still kind of stand by that for the, the majority of the season. Like, like yeah, Hibiki obviously had a big character arc. Uh, Subasa had a smaller one. H Hibiki's character arc definitely got bigger because of this finale. Like prior to this, it was it was it was pretty small. Like I, I said in the reaction, but it was pretty much down to it's like oh I was doing things wrong. I realize that I'm changing things up. I'm trying to be better. <laughs> it's like that's pretty much what it amounted to. But then we got this, and it's like oh there's no there's more to it. There is very much more to it. Um, we we see like kind of the follow up with her. I'll just call it beast mode. <laughs> and seeing how she's able to come out of that we we see the resolution to the to the opening scene with uh the grave and everything we see the resolution to that and, and we see how far she's come as a character since the beginning it, it's kind of like seeing Anne's progress in season two of amphibia um, which you see a lot more than by the end of season one. Like, by the end of season one, you definitely see a lot of progress, but not as much as you would, I, or at least me, that I would hope. <laughs> um, but in season two, you really do start to see it a lot more. You really do, it, it, they make it more apparent. And, and by the time you reach season three, it's like, oh yeah, she's a completely different character. It's actually made a, a legitimate part of the story with how she interacts with her parents and all. Um, but it kind of in this one, in this case, it's very clear by by this finale that Hibiki has changed. Hibiki has very much uh, grown and become stronger and more self confident and everything. She is a very different person than she was when this started. Even 
not not even counting the two years ago, but like when this when the first episode ended, when she went beast mode for the first time and was using her sinful gear, she is nothing like she was back then, at all. Except maybe the kindness. Like she's still super kind. <laughs> um, and Subasa's obviously ch changed. She's no longer Edgy M McEdgerson. She's no longer stuck in her trauma through losing her girlfriend Kanade. Um, and instead is, uh, is able to, you know, find hope and happiness again. And Chris, again, I still stand by that Chris had the biggest and most impressive character arc in this. Definitely my favorite character. Um, though I, I do like the others. It's just Chris is my favorite by far. Uh, the trauma baby thing is like, I, I very much connect to trauma baby characters in media so it's like yeah seeing seeing chris kind of embody that really hard in this uh season was yeah it's it just makes me instantly like her it does and and even outside of that i just enjoyed her character and i enjoyed her evolution as a character she went from being someone who was the bad guy to being kind of on the verge of like oh like I don't know what to do now because I was betrayed and I don't trust you all yet. To working with them, but still not fully trusting and being kind of tsundere. And now she's just best friends with them. She is fully a good guy. She's 100% in. She's best buddies. Hugs all around. Also, uh, speaking of amphibia, bring that back in. Did that ending part where they were going into space to stop the moon and all remind you of the ending of Amphibia at all? Because it very much did for me. Like, it's, like three girls go into space using their full magical girl power and destroy the moon. Or, well, in this case, part of a moon. Um, it's like, this is just Amphibia. <laughs> And the thing is, I'm not, I'm not by any means uh, disappointed by that. I just like, that is very similar. I kind of wonder, did Amphibia take that from this? Like, I know Amphibia and Owl House and other shows like that have been inspired by a lot of anime and everything. I wonder if that, that was inspired by Sympho Gear. If that was actually inspired by Sympho Gear, if anyone could actually tell me that, if that was, that's actually pretty fucking sick. Because it is so similar. It is so actively similar. Like, that's not just me, right? I can't be the only one that sees that. Um, Genjiro didn't have too much to do in this finale, though. Let, let's move on to talking more about this. Uh, <laughs> Genjiro didn't have too much to do because he was taken out of commission. Um, he did fight uh he he did fight Fine for a bit, but he did also fall to her trap. Cause Genjiro is very clearly a very kind person himself. And so when she brought out the Ryoko mode and, and everything, it, it gave him it, it gave him enough pause. Even though he knew that it was Fine and that re that she was always evil, like it still gave him enough pause because he did care for Ryoko. They were friends. So it caused him to, to, to pause enough for her to impale him. And luckily he survived because he got medical attention right away. But yeah, it's like... I, I don't blame him for doing that. Because again, he, he lived all this time like trusting her and, and and liking her and caring for her maybe not I, I don't know if there was anything romantic there there might have been i don't know but he definitely liked her as a friend they were still pretty close i would say um so yeah of course he's gonna hesitate i don't blame him for a second for that i mean it, it was still recently that they found out that she was betraying them I mean, it was longer than we knew, but still, it was still semi-recently, so, yeah, of course he's going to hesitate in that regard. Like, that's just obvious, honestly. Um, but yeah, 
so he didn't have too much to do, but he did come out and help encourage the girls, especially Hibiki, when needed. So, so he was still important, without question. He was still important, just like Ugawa was. Ugawa was pretty great. He, he, he. Ugawa's just kind of like the character who's just like, I'm here to help. I'll, I'll just come in and help at random times, and it's like, I'm, I'm cool. He's not like super important. He's a very he, he's a he's notably a side character, <laughs> um, but he's a good character. I, I was saying in this that like he's one of those characters who I could see dying, and I still stand by that idea that I could have seen that we could have seen him die. Like in terms of how his character was done and how his importance to the series was, he could have died very easily, and it, it wouldn't have surprised me at all. I'm glad he survived, but he could have died. Um, and obviously we, like, it didn't actively show a lot of it. Um, like, we saw, we saw a, uh, military soldier get killed by, by, uh, a, a noise, but we didn't see a lot of it, but we know a shit ton, a metric fuck ton of people died during this uh battle like i would not even begin to try and guess the number but we know that like even with just that that cannon blast that uh fine did that laser blast on the um on the city it's like you fucking know a shit ton of people died there um the attack on the school you know that that students and, and probably faculty and plenty of others died during that. You like 100%. Like, I, I'm sure there are a lot more survivors than what we saw. Cause we only saw like a few girls, but still we also for sure know that a lot died. Um, it's like, yeah, Th like this series has a very massive death toll. Like there, there is a huge death count in Simpho Gear. Um, I, hell, the the first episode, like you know how much that shocked me by how, like all the people just dying like that. Also, the traumatic way they died, like that's still super fucked up. Just that girl in the in the first episode, like crying out, like literally crying out, like I don't want to die, like please help me, and then she just and then she's killed, and it's like. That's fucked up. <laughs> I I don't like that. <laughs> that bothers me <laughs> on just a very emotional level. And it's like, yeah, a lot of the series didn't like keep up with that level of shock throughout. But there 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 was still plenty of shock to it. And um by the end, obviously that was brought back to a much larger scale. So yeah. I really enjoyed how they handled all that. I really I, I really think that starting off the season and ending it off with massive shock and massive like death and everything was actually a really smart way to handle it. Uh, it allows the rest of the season to breathe and allows the characters to be uh, kind of more focused on. Because that was definitely the focus of this season and I think that just the series so far in general. Um, the characters, the, the people that this series is, is about is what it's focused on. More so than the music, more so than the, um, the motivations of the villain and everything. It's about the people. It's about humanity. It's about Chris. It's about Hibiki. It's about Subasa. It's about Genjiro. It's about all of them. It's their story. This is a story about humanity and about them being human, which is why the entire big thing about uh, Fine trying to transcend humanity, that being literally her whole thing, um, that's why it was so cathartic and satisfying to have just three human girls beat her. They weren't trying to transcend humanity at all. They were just embracing it. 
one of them for the first time in her life. <laughs> like, Chris is finally embracing humanity and her life. Like, yeah. So, I'm very satisfied with how this season ended. I think this finale was very, very good. It was intense. It was uh, shocking. It was exciting and fun and heartwarming. A lot of emotions. Again, I did not for a second believe anyone died when they supposedly did, but... <laughs> Uh, you know, the girl, the main girls. But still, the, the moments are still emotional with uh, the characters thinking they're dead. Like, Gendro thinks that his niece is dead. It's like, yeah, he of course he loves the shit out of Subasa. Miku thinking Hibiki is dead? Like, yeah, that's that's heartbreaking. Not because I thought she was dead, but because her girlfriend did. And by the way... Like, you may have noticed in this finale, I kept referring to Miku and Hibiki as girlfriends and Subasa and Kanade as girlfriends. It's like, I'm just, I'm just fully headcanoning that as, like, truth right now. It's like, again, you, you, I've been told, you guys have told me that, um, the fandom pretty much refers to this as Simpho gay, and it's like, it's, it's just very blatant that, like, that it's it's pretty damn gay and everything <laughs> that it's like everyone sees that and it's like so at this point i'm just referring to them that way even if it's not technically official i i'm just that's how i see it um i don't necessarily ship chris and subasa together though um, at the moment, like, uh, obviously, uh, Kanade's not around anymore for Subasa, but I don't, like, ship those two. Maybe I could in the future, but, like, obviously, uh, Miku and Hibiki are, like, soulmates, practically. <laughs> like, at the end there, when, like, she ran in to hug Hibiki after finding out she was alive, like, I, I, honestly, if they kissed right there, I would have not been the least bit surprised. If Miku planted a strong kiss right on her lips at that moment, like, that that would have been perfectly set up. I would not have been in, surprised in the least. And there's also probably fan art of that. I would not be surprised in that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm wondering if any of these other girls will end up becoming Symphogear users. And I'm, I'm still wondering how Symphogears are going to continue as a thing going forward, how any more Sinful Gear users will end up popping up because, you know, Fine is gone. But th again, there will probably be someone else who will just take on her research and her position. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. Obviously, again, no spoilers for the future, but we are taking a break from Sinful Gear for the time being. Um, as much as I do want to continue this series, because I very much enjoy it, I like this series... <laughs> Um, I do want to take a break. It's not one of those shows where I feel like I need to go into the next season right away, like, uh, Centaur World or Amphibia. Um, I, I can, I can handle taking a break from this for the time being, especially because we cranked out a lot of episodes, like, pretty quickly with this series. Um, I want to, I, I just want to take a break and come back to it more refreshed and ready for season two when we get to that. So the question is, what is going to replace Sympho Gear for the time being? As I said in the pre-thoughts, um, it is going to be a donation rewards show, because this slot is going to remain for donation rewards for now. Um, and so I was thinking, do I bring back one of the ones that I had on hold for the moment? Um, but, I, but I figured, no, I probably don't want to do that, because... I specifically said I would be bringing back uh, Total Drama after Fire Force. Like, when I take a break from Fire Force, because I know I'm going to take a break, I'm not going to get through the entire season in one go. Um, when I take a break from Fire Force Season 2, I'm going to go back to Total Drama, probably finish that, and then go back to Fire Force. I already had that plan in place. So if we're going to keep this as a donation reward... What do I go to? 
there's a lot of stuff on my list that I've been wanting to get to. A lot of stuff that uh, that I've been putting off for one reason or another. Um, but the show that I think I want to get to, because that's how I'm doing it. That's how I'm deciding it. What I want to get to the most right now, um, that's how I'm deciding what to go with. And the show that I want to get to the most is one that I just keep hearing everyone fucking talking about. Like, people will not shut the fuck up about this series. And so it's like, yeah, I'm not getting back to anything, but I'm starting something new. And I'm hoping, because I'm going to be extremely disappointed if not... I am hoping this lives up to the very lofty expectations that the uh, general anime fandom, I guess you could say, is putting on it. Because, God, people, again, people will just not shut up about this series. It is, it has received so much praise. Like, honestly, I, I, I've heard more about this series than I ever did with my Dress Up Darling. This has gotten more attention than that. I think that the amount of attention this series has gotten rivals even Spy Family. And that got a shit ton of attention. And all I know about this series is Pink Haired Girl, music is somehow involved. So yes, we're going to another series with music, I guess. And I've seen over and over this gif of the Pink Haired Girl glitching out no other way to put it on the floor so if it's not obvious yes our next reaction series taking over for Symphogear gear is bochi the rock um bochi the rock um is a donation reward for matthew vasquez so thank you matthew for donating for this uh and yeah i don't entirely know what to expect um, but we're going into another series somewhat based around music, I guess. And people are saying that this is one of the best comedy anime. So I, 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 I that is another thing I do know. It is comedy. Um, and, and if you've ever heard me say it, my favorite comedy anime is Nietzsche Joe. If this can even rival, like even get near Nietzsche Joe's humor to me, then I'll be happy because Nietzsche Joe is fucking brilliant with its humor. It is so fucking random and silly and off the walls. If you've never seen Nietzsche Joe, you need to see it. Like, it is, it is, as of current, it is the funniest anime I have ever seen, without question. Like, even the funniest parts of, like, some of my favorite anime, like One Piece or whatnot, Cannot even compare to Nietzsche Joe. Uh, even if you just watch some clips on YouTube, like the principal uh, wrestling the deer, or um, pretty much anything involving uh, Shinonome, like, yeah. It, it, pretty much anything. There's clips or anything. And you can watch it dub or sub because the dub is actually just as great. <laughs> The dub is new too. Like the series is the series has been out for a while, but the dub only came out like in the past couple of years, I believe. Um, but it has some great VAs in it, and they really sell the humor of it well. Um, when I originally watched, I watched in sub, but yeah. Um, so if Bochi the Rock can stand up to that to any degree, I will be happy, even if it's not on the level, but like anywhere near it, it's like it'll still be damn good. Um, but yeah, at, no, people will not shut up about this series. It is everywhere, constantly. I'm su I'm surprised I actually don't know more. I'm really surprised I don't know more because I feel like I would. <laughs> um, but that's coming, and I'm I'm gonna tell you right now that uh, my reaction to that is coming like probably tomorrow. I want to I want to check that out as quickly as possible. I want to uh, find that out like right away, practically. 
so that's going to come probably tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so expect that when it comes. <laughs> Either way, thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, and thank you um, to Calypso once again for donating for Simpho Gear and tuning me in to what has become a really good series for me. Um, I very much enjoyed this. Uh, so like I said, we will get to season two down the line. I don't know exactly when. I'm gonna ho hopefully try not to make it, uh, make the wait too long, but yeah, we will be getting to it down the line somewhere. So thank you so much. Uh, Calypso has a couple other series, uh, in line for the future as well. So, uh, I don't know if we'll get to at least one of those before coming back to Simpho Gear, but we'll see. Um, we can't do too many donation rewards at once, you know? We don't have enough slots for that, and I don't have enough time for that. <laughs> um, but yeah. So thank you, Calypso, though. Um, and like I said, we will be getting back to this as soon as we can. And thank you to Matthew, um, for donating for Bochi the Rock. And that make I, I just realized, with Fire Force also being on schedule, both of the donation rewards I'm currently reacting to are from Matthew. That's unusual. But very welcome um thank you very much matthew uh for donating and all so yeah and uh thank you to everyone who donates <laughs> but as i said uh no spoilers for the future of Simpho gear please i i want to remain spoiler free i i definitely do not want to know what's going to happen next um but if there's anything i missed in this finale or in this season as a whole or if there's anything you want to clarify for me, feel free to leave those in the com that kind of stuff in the comments. For now, though, uh, thank you so much once again. I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.